What's up everybody, today I'm gonna to be going through a brief video on uh, R Markdown, which is something that I started using like maybe a year and a half, two years ago, and then uh, kind of stopped, and I've recently been reintroducing myself to it, so I figured I'd go through a, just a simple introduction to uh, R Markdown, which allows us to generate PDF, or in the case of today's video, an HTML file uh, using R. And uh, maybe I'll make a video next on Shiny apps, which allow users to interact with the web page as well. So uh, I'm excited to get my new monitor here. Um, so we'll be coding on that. And let's hop into it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up and uh, generate a new R Markdown file, like so. Uh, you can give it a title here. We'll just uh, call this um, example of static HTML markdown we got the author here we got the HTML you can change this to PDF or Word Docs we're just gonna do HTML today and uh, we'll go ahead and click OK and what you'll see is that this is gonna generate uh, this header here so it's gonna give that title that we gave it the author it's gonna put the date in here and it's gonna tell us that our output is an HTML document right so uh, the rest of this stuff, it just provides some examples and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this. We're going to be adding our own info here. So we'll go ahead and delete all of this. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the NHL data that we've been using in some of the data visualization and data wrangling um, videos so uh, before we load any of that we're gonna call in some libraries now this part here is called an R chunk and R chunks are parts of code that are going to be running um, but the code itself you can see up here it says include equals false we can also put echo equals false so the code itself is not going to show up in our HTML but it is going to run um, so we're gonna call in the tidyverse because we'll do a little bit of cleaning and then we are also going to call in uh, ggplot. So we'll plot something here too. So we'll call in ggplot too. All right, so after you have this R chunk set up, these are the libraries um, that we're gonna be calling in. You can do all sorts of stuff. Um, first, we'll talk about what the comment syntax is because it's HTML comment syntax, uh, which is not typical R syntax. So if you're familiar with R, typically what you do is you would just put a number sign and then write your comment. That is not the case when you're doing Markdown. Markdown is going to be using HTML style commenting. Right? Uh, when you do use something like the hashtag here or the number symbol, it is to produce uh, what would be an HTML, an H1 tag. Um, so it's larger letters. So it would be something like this, header, and then you can make two and it would be a little bit smaller, header, three, it would be smaller, header and then you could also just write header and then if you want to produce this document what you do is you come up here and you hit knit and this is going to run uh, oh I need to save it first so we'll save it um, let's just hop into this R we'll just save it here and we'll say example static HTML all right so now that it's saved we'll knit going 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 and this is what's ultimately going to produce our HTML so here it comes output created and you can see here so those headers that showed up over here in lines one through six are up here and then you can see that I've got these different um, versions of header based on how I formatted it in the R script and you'll also notice that that R chunk from lines 8 to 12 uh, is not showing up here and again that's because we have this included equals false right so this is just a very basic introduction to how you um, create a markdown file and things that you can do inside of it uh, let's go through now and just uh, actually uh, do something interesting let's load some data and let's uh, plot some data and then we'll call it a video so let's just give it a kind of an h1 here explore NHL data okay and then what we're gonna do is um, go ahead and create an R chunk 
that will pull in the data that we want. So it's gonna load it, it's gonna tidy it, and then we will go ahead and plot it. So to create an R chunk, you just do what we had above. You have the three of those. You call in R. Again, we want um, to make sure that it doesn't show up on the actual page. So we're gonna set echo equal to false. And then if any warnings are thrown, we don't want those to show up on the page. So we'll hit false again. And then we will close out the chunk like this. Okay, so uh, what we wanna do first is load data. Oh, also I'm going to mention that inside of R chunks, the comment syntax is the same as typical R. So you just give it that um, hashtag sign or the number sign and you're good to go. All right, so uh, to load data, what we're gonna do is make it interactive. So we're gonna say my data uh, path will be set equal to um, file.choose and then we're gonna say new equal to, uh, yeah, false. Okay, so this is gonna um, allow us to pick a file and then um, it will give us the path of that file and then what we have to do is just go ahead and say my data is going to be equal to, uh, we have a CSV file, so it's gonna be read CSV, uh, my data path. So this will take in the path that we got from the interactive part and then it will read in the CSV file that we choose, right? And then we can uh, remove my data path. All right, so this is how we're going to uh, load the data and then we will tidy the data. Well, let's say this, tidy data. Um, let's load in the data first and then we will see what that looks like. So we'll go ahead and hit knit. Uh, you know, I probably should just tidy it based on how I know it's gonna look. Um, if you've seen the NHL videos, you know that this is just a, um, it's a big file. I'll just pull up the CSV actually. So we'll wait for this to finish loading up and then I will uh, pull up the CSV. Uh, you can't see it here, but let me pull this over onto the other monitor. Uh, what this is doing here is it's, this is the um, interactive part. So this is going to give us my data path. And so the data is in this file here, it's just called skater stats. So I'll open that and you can see it hasn't generated the HTML file yet because it's running this uh, my data path, my data. So it's reading it in now and now it's going to pop up and we shouldn't really see much other than the header and then it's say explore NHL data, right? But the data has been loaded and if we were to do stuff with it, we could go ahead and plot things, for example, right here. But before we do that, let me just um, kind of show you what that file looks like. Let's see, markdown, data, let's go ahead and open this. So this is a, an NHL data set. It's just got uh, player names, games played, goals scored, assists, points, penalty minutes, uh, and then it's across a bunch of seasons dating back into like the 1950s or something. It's a, um, it's a large file. And yeah, you can see here, it's just a huge file, um, a lot of columns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tidy this up to only include uh, the 2018 season and I'm gonna greatly limit, excuse me, the number of columns that we have. <clears throat> so let's do that. Running a bit slow here for some reason. All right, so we're gonna tidy this up by calling, uh, we'll say my data and we're using just common tidyverse functions here is equal to my data. And then we will uh, select, we will want season column, the team column, uh, player, and then let's get, uh, let's get just goals for right now. So that's pretty easy. And then we will filter this so that we only have data from the 2018 season. We need to spell season correctly here. All right, and uh, I'm just looking at my notes here and it looks like um, for some reason it loads it in, it loads goals, the goals column in as a factor. So we're going to say my data uh, goals is equal to as numeric and then we will pass in my data goals. Okay, so that's going to tidy up the data and then we can go ahead and do something like we'll say uh, plot. 
and then we're going to open up another R chunk here. So we will say R echo is equal to false. We'll close out the chunk. Okay, and uh, now we can just go ahead and do a um, a simple ggplot. So we'll call it in. We'll say uh, ggplot, and let's go ahead and plot. Uh, we got 2000, 2018. Let's go ahead and plot across all teams uh, number of goals scored by each player. So we'll have a box plot with all of the teams, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So first thing in here is my data. And then we're going to call in aesthetics. And we will say, uh, and we want them ordered too. So this is something I've recently discovered. You can call in on the x axis, we're going to get all of the teams, but we want them to be reordered from largest number of uh, goals scored to smallest. So we're going to say reorder team based on goals. And then we want to do that based on the median of goals. Okay, then we need to define our y axis, it's going to be goals. And then we want to fill the, we're going to do a box plot. We want to fill the box plot based on the team. Okay. So then let's call in a uh, geome box plot. And within geome box plot, we're just going to specify a few things. We say the, uh, we want the outline color to be equal to, um, we want it to be black. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we want to have the line width be equal to, let's say 0 0.5, because there's going to be a lot of teams on there. Uh, and then we will also include each point. So we'll call geome uh, point. And within geome point, we want uh, outline to be black circles. We want position to be equal to uh, position. I think we want jitter dodge position. Uh, jitter dodge and then what else do we want we want to throw in uh, the theme classic it's my favorite theme we can change our x and y labels so we can say uh, x lab is going to be equal to um, team and we can say y lab will be equal to um, goals so goals scored. And then the other thing that I want to do, I, I kind of hate having um, so many things along the X axis. So what we can do after we label all of this stuff is we can say um, chord flip so that our X axis goes up onto our Y axis. All right, let's go ahead and run this now and uh, take a look at what this looks like. So we'll save it and then we are going to knit it. And this should run and assuming there's no mistakes, uh, it'll produce what we want it to, hopefully. Remember that we're calling in this interactive um, path, so it's going to, the first thing it's going to do is pop up a, uh, a file tree, which we will navigate uh, towards our data. So there's the data we want to pull in. coming here it comes all right so there you have it the legend uh, we should remove the legend it doesn't look great like this but you can see the general idea right like the the plot code doesn't show up but the actual plot does um, and you could do anything you wanted with this you know you could uh, change the the axes just like you would in R using ggplot functionality hide the the legend if you want to you don't really need the legend because you've got the team names over here and you'll also notice that that reorder that we put in the ggplot aesthetics uh, does reorder these based on median and so you can see up here um, each dot represents a player and the number of goals that they scored during the 2018 season so you can see the the Tampa Bay Lightning had these four players um, there might be others underlapped uh, overlapped underneath of these um, but you can see that they had a lot of players scoring a lot of goals um, not surprising Tampa Bay I think 2018 conference finals 
I don't think they made it to the Stanley. No, 2018 was uh, the Capitals and Vegas, I think. And so we should see Vegas. Yeah, there's Vegas. Uh, Washington, surprisingly, very low on this list. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just trying to give you an example of um, of Markdown. Uh, our Markdown, I think, is incredibly cool. It's a very easy way to plot data. Um, and it's also a great way, like, you could, you know, if you're generating a report for somebody, you want to take this and uh, basically send it to them and then send them the R code. And then that way they can see not only the output, but all of the code that you used to get you that output. And you can also echo true so that the code shows up directly on the HTML. So um, there's all sorts of really cool things that you could uh, do with, with that. So, okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, just a brief introduction to R Markdown. I'm gonna be making a few more um, doing stuff with R Markdown. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give this a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel to see more. You can also find me on Twitter. Uh, you can find a lot of my code up on GitHub. And you can find out more about me on LinkedIn and ResearchGate. All right, until next time, keep coding.